There are a few different ways of working, but one in particular I would call a force-based method. And you can probably tell if you're using it by how you tend to feel when it comes to work. Maybe you're feeling exhausted or overwhelmed. Too much to do, have no idea where to start. You can have a hard time engaging things, sometimes even with things that you'd otherwise normally enjoy. Maybe you feel like you're dependent on due dates to make much of anything happen. Or maybe you, uh, when you do get to something, you start heading down one rabbit trail after the next, getting lost, not knowing where you're heading. Or maybe you just plain feel stuck. In the meantime, you try to get yourself to move forward, of course. So maybe you use sticky notes, but those start piling up everywhere. To-do lists, one burden task manager after the next, papers, digital files start growing everywhere. Or maybe you've got alerts and reminders that start to shout past each other louder and louder, but then blend into the background. Or maybe you yell at yourself. You use shame to try to get yourself to move forward. Even when it looks like you're holding it together. Maybe it feels like you're straining, bursting at the seams, just barely holding on. These are often a result of what I would call a force-based method of work. It's one that many of us can fall into and not even realize it, or maybe you know it all too well. It's often a go-to method for those with ADHD, anxiety, depression, as well as those who are creative, intelligent, just like to explore things. It's really about those whose natural rhythms of mind don't seem to sync up readily with the demands made around them. And so they often feel like they need to turn to some form of force. But I'm guessing that somewhere in your life, when the conditions were just right, you felt engaged. You're sailing, you're getting more done in a shorter time than most. And creative insights would seem simple, obvious. Ideas might click. Maybe you start exploring, discovering. Your mind, the world, the inner critic grows quieter too. There's a feeling of accomplishment, and when you're done, you might even feel like you can rest, you feel fulfilled, or maybe you're ready to take on more. It's from that place of a relaxed, heightened attention, where we lose ourselves in the play of the work, that we start engaging in things that feel more real and meaningful, and we find this creative well, where we often make our most powerful and even beautiful creations. It can seem mysterious as to how you get there. You know, what stars needed to align to make that happen? I'm betting that whatever it was, though, it started with a visit. Okay, what do I mean by a visit? A visit means showing up to whatever the work is with no pressure to perform one way or the other. You don't have to do a thing. You can move forward, you can step away, daydream, connect, disconnect at your pace. And when you do that, this allows your mind to find its own time, its own rhythm, its own understanding of what the work is and where you might connect with it. It lets you tune in to where it's not too hard and overwhelming or not too boring. And you hit that window of challenge that just works for you. Now, what does that have to do with reality, with deadlines, things you don't want to do? It might seem that you don't have much of a say as to whether you can work in that pace or that rhythm with other things. But the thing is, there is another method of work that can work well for those who feel out of sync with the demands made around them. Because it's all about tuning in from where you are now. Not surprisingly, I call this a visit-based method of work. In fact, you can make much of your day about that real engagement, even with things you don't want to do, and still get to the things you do want to do. And you can do that using this visit-based model of arranging your work. My name is Dr. Koroshdini. I'm a clinical psychiatrist and psychoanalyst, and I've been in practice for more than 20 years. I'm an award-winning author of multiple books and courses, each about finding a calm focus, all about getting to those things that feel meaningful to you, while staying on top of the responsibilities that would help you get there. I encourage you to sign up for a newsletter I've got. You can go to wavesoffocus.com, sign up there. You'll get a PDF, your first steps to breaking free from force-based work to help you get started. You can also sign up to my Instagram at MD. The PDF offers a simple approach 
that can start blossoming into a calmer way of working. I do hope you that you find this unique approach as useful and helpful as it has been for my students, for my clients, and for myself.